I'm Matt Egan. I'm from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And now I'm going to give you a presentation and an exercise on creating a logic model to guide an evaluation. Myself and my colleagues work at Spiral at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and we're funded to do this as part of the NIHR School for Public Health Research. So I'll give you a quick outline of how this session will play out but it's really intended to be done live in front of a room full of practitioners and you're welcome to take the presentation and use it in that way. To begin with, we have a quick look at what logic models and theories of changes are. And we give an example of a logic model as a guide to data collection. Then we set up an activity for small groups of people, typically around the table. Feedback, uh, and then we talk about how we may have approached it. So first of all, we're going to look at logic models and theories of change. Theory of change, as we've discussed before, are the stages you think an intervention needs to go through to achieve its impact. What needs to happen? Usually several things. Logic models are simple diagrams that represent those changes. So we have on the slide here an example of a very simple logic model, quite a linear one. Uh, it begins with inputs, the kind of things that are needed to actually set up the intervention. The intervention itself the immediate things that the intervention produces, the outputs, uh, and then those outputs, if they're delivered successfully, would hopefully have both intermediate and long-term outcomes. And all the way along the chain, contextual factors are like to influence what happens. So when creating your logic model, it's often sensible to draw on formal theories and also stakeholder theories to create the model. So you might want to check the literature and you will almost certainly want to talk to the people delivering and possibly receiving the intervention. You can then use the logic model as a guide for data collection. Logic models look simple, but there are complex, complex interactions between the elements and the context. And so, yes, they are simplistic but that doesn't mean you have to always think about them simplistically. Logic models present interventions as static, but in, the, but in the real world, things change over time. Okay, so what you can see in front of you is a simple logic model that we've produced for an intervention of our, uh, evaluation of our own. It's an alcohol licensing intervention. I don't want to go into too much detail about what the intervention is, Oh, it's called cumulative impact policy. The idea is really to show how we've mapped out its theory of change and what kind of decisions we've made about the evaluation as a result of that mapping. Okay, so you can see a thought bubble over the, um, over the first box and it says define the intervention and the research question. So this is about really understanding what cumulative impact policy actually is. And this is one of those interventions that seems to be delivered and thought about differently by different people who deliver it. So the first thing we did was talk to people delivering cumulative impact policies in different parts of the country and get an idea of what the intervention is and what different people thought it was there to achieve. Okay, so you can now see the thought bubble labelled outputs. Once you've got an idea of what the intervention actually is, it's time to think about what it is that it's immediately going to deliver. Now, cumulative impact policy, as I said, is a licensing intervention. And so the thing that it delivers, first and foremostly, is licensing changes. That is, changes to the possibly the number of licenses granted, changes to the type of licenses granted to serve alcohol, both on and off premises. To evaluate these immediate outputs, the obvious thing to do is to collect data on licensing decisions over time and that's what we did. Besides collecting statistical data about licensing decisions we also talked to people involved in the licensing processes to learn more about how they think cumulative impact policy has affected what they do and what happens. Now moving on to intermediate outcomes. So assuming that the intervention did indeed make some changes to the types or number of alcohol licenses being granted in local areas the next question is, well, what impact did that have beyond licensing itself? And here we've decided to frame intermediate outcomes as um, what changes this made to the high street. Licenses are all about uh, giving shops and off licenses and on licenses the uh, legal right to serve alcohol. So if there's been a change to licensing, we want to see whether that's changed how alcohol is sold on the high street within a local area. And again, we can look at that in both quantitative and qualitative terms. Now on to population outcomes. 
if we see indeed a change to how alcohol is being sold on the high street, if we see a change to alcohol availability, then according to the theory of change, that should influence some population outcomes. If alcohol becomes more available, that could, for example, encourage more drinking. If alcohol becomes less available, that could encourage less drinking. And we might be able to uh, check some routine data to find out whether that's had any influences on, let's say, alcohol-attributed ambulance call-outs and crime and antisocial behaviour. And again, we could also do qualitative research to ask residents or drinkers or people who work in bar and clubs or the police or other service providers whether they've noticed any differences. And finally, we come to long-term outcomes. If alcohol availability has changed, if this has changed people's drinking behaviour, if this is sustained over a long period of time, there is a chance that it could then affect long-term health outcomes to do with alcohol use. So here we're thinking about alcohol, hospital admissions and chronic conditions. The only other thing I'd tell you about this diagram that you might notice is that the thickness of the arrows that join the different links of the chain get narrower as you go along the chain. And the reason why we've done it that way is simply to show that um, when it comes to attributing change to the actual intervention, it's often more plausible to attribute changes that come at the start of the chain. By the time you get into, say, long-term health outcomes, there becomes more and more other things, more and more other confounders that could influence those changes that you see. In which case your evidence for attribution becomes weaker. It becomes less plausible that any change you've seen is definitely caused by the intervention you're looking at. The way to thicken up those arrows at the end of the chain are to have a good comparison group, a good control. And then you can help you um, um, test your findings uh, against possible confounding. Having just seen an example of a logic model and how that logic model can be used to uh, design an intervention, having seen how it begins with defining the intervention, looking at the very immediate outputs, the very basic thing that that intervention is supposed to do, and then seeing a, a chain of uh, effects that might follow on from that, uh, in this case early effects changing high street sales of alcohol and then behavioural changes and immediate uh, health or injury outcomes and then finally possibly long-term outcomes. Having looked down the chain and thought about how to evaluate different points of that chain, I'm going to ask you to do something similar. So again, imagining um, as we normally deliver this to a room full of practitioners sitting around tables, at this point we give them usually anything up to an hour to consider how to do a logic model and plan an evaluation for a different type of alcohol intervention along similar lines of what they've just seen. So the alcohol intervention in question is the voluntary removal of cheap, strong beer and cider from local off licenses, sometimes gets called reducing the strength. Shops, local retailers voluntarily remove cheap, strong beer and cider from their shops, the super strengths, with some encouragement from local public health and, and, and other practitioners. The local authority public health and licensing teams are encouraging the intervention and would like you to evaluate it. Some shops have already started. So, can you plan your evaluation by developing a model similar to the one you've just seen for cumulative impact policies and see how far you get. The next few slides in this presentation I'm not going to read out now and they're actually notes for people who are, uh, if anyone decides to give this workshop. OK, the last few slides in this presentation I'm not going to read out. The suggestions for facilitating the uh, task, the, the exercise that you've just heard about, and suggestions about how to get feedback from people who are doing the task. And they're really for people who choose to give this presentation and this exercise to a group of people themselves. You can read these notes, decide whether you agree with them, and decide whether you want to do something similar with your group.